Hello, this is question five from the 2019 winter exam from Cambridge International Education. It's paper one, two. The question revolves around this cone you can see. They're gonna ask us a question about the volume of it and then they're gonna ask us to differentiate to find when the volume is stationary. Here's the information they give us. It's a bit small in my drawing, apologies for that. Uh, just to point out what things are. The height here is just the height from the bottom to the top. Very simple, that one. The 15 though is more important. That's the slant height. That's the distance if you measured along the edge. So actually let me make that a little clearer by putting um, this line in like that. Okay, so that slant height is 50. So part one asks us, it's one of those annoying questions where they give us the answer. They tell us phi is equal to this. Show how that happens. How I like to do these questions is ignore this. Pretend you don't see it. Just find what the volume is equal to. But remember it's here because it's a nice little hint. It's a hint when you're going right or going wrong. So we'll use the formula we know for volume of a, of a cone. That's phi is equal to one over three pi r squared h. So there is some similarities with this. We have a third, we have a pi, and we do have a h, but it's not quite the same. If you are gonna use this as a hint, here's the thing to take from it. There's no or in it. There's h's in it, there's pi's in it, there's a third in it even. There's no or's in this answer they want. So what you need to think about is to get rid of this or. So really, how we get rid of something is just find out what it's equal to. What you really wanna do is get or equals something. Sorry, or squared equals something would also help. But or equals something. So how would we do that? Let's look at this again from the side. Let's draw it in a two-dimensional way. This is a H, this is 15, and this here is R. That's um, this distance here. This distance here is R. If we look at it like this, we can see it's a right angle triangle. We chose to come straight down into the middle here. Straight down into the middle will hit the center of the circle. So we can use Pythagoras theorem here. That's 15 squared is equal h squared plus r squared. And we want to get rid of r squared. So that's very handy because r squared is right here. This is saying r squared is equal to 15 squared is 225. Again, that's handy. Um, 225 uh, minus h squared, minus h squared. So you can probably see where this comes from already. Let's take this r squared and put it in here. Phi is equal to one over three pi Instead of r squared, we'll put in this and we'll leave h here. So two, two, five minus h squared. Let's just multiply the h in. Uh, again, you might wanna multiply everything in, that's fine, but you are trying to make it look like this. So keep an eye on what this was, the one third pi, leave that outside. The h is not here. So let's multiply it in and hope it looks the same. One over three pi, two, two, five multiplied by h, 225 h minus h squared multiplied by another h is h cubed and that's it that's our final answer for part one we've shown where that comes from so you needed to know your formula for volume they gave it to you in the question you needed really to find h or you needed to equate or and h that's very common in these q in these uh, cone questions it's very common to try and get a connection between two of these numbers Okay, part two tells us given h can vary, so this height can vary, this can be a different shape each time. Find the value of h for which v has a stationary value. That should ring a bell in your head, stationary value. What we're going to be talking about here is d, um, sorry, dv, dv dh. That's, sorry, dv dh equals zero. That's going to be where our stationary value. That's because um, this phi squared here, this phi squared, if we were to draw this, now I don't know exactly what it looks like, but there's a cube function here. So it's gonna look something like, like this. Uh, it might be a bit flatter than that. But a cube function is gonna look like this. That's what v, this is the function v, phi in h. So this has stationary values. It has two, probably. We're probably gonna find two. Although it says uh, find stationary value, there's no s at the end of value. So that's another little hint they give us. We'll see why that appears. So yeah, as h varies, as we vary along h, at some point phi becomes stationary. We can see that. Phi is going up, phi is going up, phi is going up, phi is going up, phi is going down, phi is going down, going down, going up, going up. There's two points right here where it's not, not going up or down. It's stationary. 
That's what stationary means. And how we find this? We find dv dh. We find when its slope is equal to zero. Okay, so this is what we need to do. Uh, dv dh is equal to, so let's just differentiate this. The constant out front can be ignored, and we'll just uh, differentiate what's in here. We can take them separately. The first one differentiated is 225. The, the 1 on the h multiplies by 225. h to the power of 0 disappears. As the constant h changes, how does this change? It changes by 225. Okay, as the cubic function changes, um, how does this change? We multiply by the 3. We use our formula, basically. We multiply by the 3 out front by h and drop a power. That's the derivative of this. And again, we know at the stationary point, this equals 0. So we just need to solve this. Divide across by this number. Um, divides into 0, 0 times. So we're left with this, uh, which gives us... Let's bring this across. 3h squared is equal 225. h squared is equal... I think that's 75. So h is equal to plus or minus square root of 75. This will not get you full, uh, well, we're not at the end of the question, but if they ask us for h, this would not be full marks. These, both of these are valid answers in maths for h, but not in the real world, it's not. We need to ignore, we need to say h is equal square root of 75. The examiner is looking for you to find both and then to throw one of them away. You can say uh, h is not equal to minus, you can say uh, maybe h is bigger than zero, somewhere, or really they just need to see that you've thrown away one of them. You've thrown away the minus one, because h can never be minus. It's a real world question. h can never be minus. But they didn't ask us for h, did they? They asked us, um, find the value, oh they did, sorry, they find the value of h for which phi is stationary. Determine showing all necessary workings the nature of this stationary point. So the nature of this point. So I drew earlier a little squiggle. There was two answers, that's the two of them there. Um, one's a maximum, one's a minimum, probably at least. Uh, that's what I'm guessing this looks like. It looks like a cube, uh, cubic function. But let's uh, find the nature of that a bit more mathematically. To do that, we get the second derivative. We differentiate twice uh, on this function. And the second derivative, we'll just differentiate this one here again. The constant's still here. Um, differentiate this again, we have 1 over 3 pi. What's in the bracket we differentiate? This is a constant. When h moves, it doesn't move, so it goes to 0. Uh, differentiate this, the minus says there. Multiply by 2. Uh, 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. And we're left with a h to the power of 1. So this is equal to minus, uh, let's see, 6 multiplied by a third is 2. Uh, minus 2 pi h. Minus 2 pi h is the second derivative of this. So the second derivative, let's see, uh, the second derivative when h is equal to square root of 75, when h is equal to square root of 25 is equal to minus 2 pi square root of 75. This is a positive number, a positive number, and a positive number. They all multiply to get a positive. You can put that in calculator what it comes out as. It comes out at minus uh, 54 point something. I can't remember. But it comes out as a positive number, basically. And all we we're really interested in it. Sorry, this is a positive number. Multiplied by a minus. So it comes out as a minus number. I'm sorry. So all we're really interested in is that this is less than zero. Less than zero. Therefore, um, therefore we're at a maximum. We're at a maximum point, so if I drew that again, we're at this point here. Although it doesn't look like this one, does it? Uh, because the maximum's on the right, the plus number. The minimum must have been on the left. So let me rub that out. Um, it would look more like this, which makes sense because uh, the, the function was minus. The cube part of the function, where are we? Over here. The cube part of the function was actually a minus. So when the... When h is a minus number, we get four minuses. We get a positive. Uh, when h is a positive number, we get three positives and one minus. So it's a minus number. Anyway, the, there's the maximum. The, the point where h is equal 
square root of 75 or you can give them decimal places if you want uh, let's see well we can split this up into five square root three or we could also say let me just check my numbers 8.66 all of these are fine all these answers are perfectly okay okay i hope that answered that i think i might have got a little off track there a couple of points so if you have any questions put them in the comments i'll do my best to answer them I might redo the video if there's enough questions or enough uh, problems with it, but I hope that's explained it roughly. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.